Yeah, g'day, Bush Camping Tools here today. Well, what I want to talk about here um, is a multi-fuel stove. This one happens to be um, made by MSR. It's called the XGK. Uh, it was uh, made and devised a long time ago by MSR. And um, this stove of mine is way over 20 years old now. It's uh, been a solid performer for me on overseas treks, camping, all sorts of things. I've burnt all sorts of fuel in it from aviation um, aviation fuel, which is basically essentially high-grade kerosene, to uh, petrol, super, uh, leaded, diesel, and, and ordinary kerosene. Now, I want to show you uh, how to set this thing up with uh, kerosene, uh, but a few safety warnings on these stoves, and that is you should never... Uh, buy one of these multi-fuel stoves, whether it's something like this or or other ones, and, and not uh, experiment with them properly, use them, test them properly at home before taking them away camping. Uh, it's foolish to do so. If you're not familiar with the full maintenance of these stoves and the operation, they can be absolutely lethal uh, in inexperienced hands. Uh, inexperienced hands, they're great stoves. They're a great form of stove, uh, and, and I find them great to cook on. And you can use them uh, all around the world because you can basically burn almost anything in them. What you can't burn in them uh, is, I should say, is alcohol. And the reason is, is because the fuel bottles uh, are made of aluminium and alcohol can tend to corrode the aluminium, whereas with the petrochemical type fuels, they will have no effect on that. And they do warn you about such things. Another thing which is really useful to have is a multi-tool of some sort. Uh, and the pliers, because if you happen to lose uh, the, the, the uh, various different maintenance parts that come with this kit to remove the jet, etc., and to clean uh, the system here, there's a, there's a steel cable that goes inside of here, and you can clean that by pulling it in and out. You can't do it with your fingers, and that cleans this, this tube in here, and that's necessary for, uh, to have a clean tube inside of here. Um, uh, and I'll explain that a little later on about this so let's get on with it let's fill up this thing okay so i filled up uh this with some uh kerosene or sometimes it's called paraffin and then on these bottles there's a fill line on there and it's really important for safety's sake not to fill it above the fill line there's no necessity to do that so that that's the first thing i've done fill that up and i'm going to check the o-rings around here it's important that all the o-rings on the seals are kept clean there's no dirt or knife marks on them uh, if they're cracked, and is that cracked? Let me have a look at that. That is cracked. Hold on a minute. Okay, so I've just discovered that there is a crack indeed in this O-ring. It's perished on here, and this would be a lethal situation if I started applying pressure because these, this is the pump, and these things pressurize the fuel in your fuel canister, and if fuel was to start leaking out of there, we'd really be in trouble, especially if you're using petrol. I mean, it's not a good idea using Kero or having any flammable liquid leaking out, but petrol uh, or white spirit, that would be a real problem. So you see that crack. So that's that needs replacing. I'm going to go and check now my maintenance kit. Uh, these sorts of checks should be done before you go away because if you've been using the stove or there's been some period of time where you haven't been using it and you were to take this away uh, and if you were stupid enough not to take your maintenance kit with you or check that you had an O-ring, then you're going to be in, in trouble. Okay, what you need to do to thoroughly inspect the O-ring on your pump to make sure there's no cracks or, or perishing in there is a magnifying glass. You should use a magnifying glass to really check it carefully. You need to be able to bet your life on the fact that that O-ring and uh, uh, is in top condition that seals onto the fuel bottle. The next thing that you need to do is if the O-ring has been compromised, as in this case here because it's old, um, I haven't used this stove for a bit, is you need to remove it. Never use a metallic object to remove the O-ring. Don't use a multi-tool or a screwdriver or anything like that. Use a piece of wood or plastic, preferably not too sharp, to gently ease the O-ring out. If you use anything else, you're going to damage it, okay? So don't use any metal objects to remove this O-ring from in here, from the housing there. Okay, let's get on with it. When it comes to field maintenance of uh, the MSR XGK, the normal blanking plug, now this is an old one because some of the new ones have got these ridiculous anti-child things on them, but 
Anyway, the O-ring here will be the same as this O-ring in here. Okay, so if this O-ring is good, you can take that off your fuel bottle and put that onto there. Because if you do that and you've got lots of fuel in your fuel bottle, you can't seal your fuel bottle. Uh, however, if you bolt this straight onto your fuel bottle and you're not carrying any spare fuel, then that will work. All right, so uh, I'm going to take this O-ring off of here now and I'm going to show you how to check for it to see whether this O-ring is okay as well. Okay, so the way you determine whether your O-ring's any good, this one's come off the fuel bottle, and if you squeeze the O-ring slightly, you see that crack, you can see a, you can see a crack there, okay? So these O-rings, this O-ring off the fuel bottle's no good either, and this is a lesson uh, in that if you use a multi-fuel stove, you must periodically check uh, the condition of the O-rings. As I said, you need to be able to trust your life with the integrity of the O-rings because what you don't want is fuel leaking out of a pressurized multi-fuel stove where it shouldn't be. And the only place it should be leaking out of, coming out of, is the jet itself. Okay, so we're going to go and replace these O-rings. Okay. Right, the other O-ring uh, which is necessary to check too, this is on the needle valve of sorts, and that's this O-ring here. Okay, so this also, this is the O-ring which stops uh, fuel passing in this direction along the shaft. Okay, so that's got to be in top-notch condition as well too. Otherwise, there's going to be a serious problem. So that's another O-ring that must be checked. And when you use these uh, valves to go on and off, if you, you should never screw this thing up, you know, really hard or, or unturn it too many times. Otherwise, fuel will leak out. So if you screw it in too tight, it's just not necessary. You'll damage the O-ring as well too. Right, here is the maintenance kit, the MSR maintenance kit. Let's have a look inside. And we have some O-rings inside of here. Some new O-rings and new parts. Um, and let's just put that over there for a second. New jets. We have, uh, this is the, a jet cleaner. The jet cleaner. That's important. And the wrench. We need this wrench. This wrench is important. Not to lose the wrench. Okay, because that's important. And some other parts here. These are older parts. A new fuel line. Okay. This is a fuel filter on here. Okay, a new one. I don't think we need a new one at the moment, but we'll leave that on there. And a new uh, flame spreader. Stainless steel flame spreader. Our flame spreader is fine. Okay. So let's right. So if you if you test the plunge, you should hear this sound. Okay, and that means it's working. There's pressure against it. Okay. Okay. So we have our fuel bottle. I've uh, got the pump. Had the pump serviced in there. Let's have the stove. The actual stove. Here's the stove. And. Uh, just going to put the parts in there. This is the pot support on there, our stove, right? And uh, that's all we need at the moment is the windshield in there. Can I have the windshield, please? To my assistant. Okay, okay, we have an aluminium windshield, and this is important. Uh, we'll just unfold that out like this. And what that's going to do is that's going to go around our stove like that once we get the thing going. Now the important thing is, I'll just remove that for a minute, is that the stove, you must set these things up on level ground, on stable ground. It's no good setting them up on um, uneven ground because that's just gonna uh, create a hazardous situation. So they must be on even ground, whether that's snow, a base on the snow, or uh, on the dirt, directly on the dirt. In this case, I've just put it on a slab of rock here. Okay, so um, one of the last point I want to show you is on this one here, the line, I've put a little bit of a hose on there just to protect this because this has got to be smooth, this part here, because this is going to seat up against an O-ring, so you don't want any scratches on there. So I've done that. So the, so the next thing to do is we'll put that uh, away over there because I don't want to lose that part. I'm going to place this into um, the fuel bottle. And they say in the manual you can... Just put a bit of saliva on there just to lubricate that. And that simply goes gently into the O-ring, 
uh, until it's sealed up there and make sure you put this across. This is the, the uh, safety, so, and that should clip on there like that. So it sits like this when it's finished. I'll just get that level like that. And the next thing what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna prepare myself so I've got my lighter or matches ready to uh, ignite the fuel. So let's Right, so what I'm gonna do now, I've got my valve off, of course, I'm gonna apply some pressure onto the stove, into the pump, into the fuel bottle, actually. About 10 pumps on there. And I'm gonna check first before I, I light anything that there's no leak around any of the O-rings on here, okay? No leakage on there, that's really important. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the valve. Let's have a closer look at this here. Okay, so I just spilled a bit of caro there, so I want to be careful here with that. And what we've done is I've just pressurized, I'll pressurize it a bit more. Don't want to undo the o-ring too much. Get some fuel into there, right? Close that off. Right, make sure that we've got no leaks anywhere. And we need to ignite this down into there. Let's see if we can get it going. Now with this. Get this thing to burn in there, whoops. a bit of fuel on this. Lots of fuel in there. Now normally there's a, uh, a lighter pad but these things don't never last and and um, hold on. Right, that's what we want. So you basically you set the whole thing on fire because let me just tell you how this thing works. It's going to heat up uh, the. Let me just let some fuel into that to get that going. Lots of fuel in there. What you're trying to do is you're trying to heat this pipe here and that's going to vaporize the fuel. So what you're burning with these multi-fuel stoves is simply just vapor, gas, essentially gas. Okay, so let's let that heat up for a while. Okay, so that's burning away down in there. Now, without the normal heater pad, there's nothing for the Kero to absorb on, so that's why I put some, some um, uh, bracken fern in there to light that. And you'll hear the thing starting to go when it starts going. Uh, let's just get ourselves together here, put that in the thing. I'm going to put the heat shield around it a bit, just to... I'll just leave it so you can see that steel. There, just off to the side. And normally you'll hear it when these things go. If I can have my knife there from my assistant. Thank you. Careful not to lose things here, it's important. What I'm gonna do is, just gonna quickly move this off of here. Don't wanna get the knife in the flame. So all the while we check, we don't have any leaks around the fuel bottle. Let's just get that up here a bit better. You can see that. And you hear the thing going. Okay, so that's the sound of the thing going. It's got a lot of Kero still burning at the bottom. 
going to put a bit more pressure in it. You don't want to over pressurize these things, which is really important. I'll back off that a bit just to let it go not so lean on the fuel. Okay, so that's not the sound you want. If you have it running too lean, what happens is you don't get it given enough chance to vaporize the fuel, and that's no good. It's still not running perfectly yet. They take a bit of getting used to, but once you um, get the hang of it, you can really cook and melt snow and everything on these things really quickly. Let's, there we go. That's it there, so it's just absolutely raging. Let's get a close-up of that. So, depending on what fuel you're running, whether you're running diesel or kero or petrol, will give you different amounts of heat. Kero, I found, is pretty much, much, much safer than running uh, petrol in there because if I was to spill the petrol like this, that could cause a real problem. So that's really raging on there now. And we've got a lot of action happening. So there you go, multi-fuel stove, running Kero. There are the checks you've got to have on it. Uh, thanks for watching Bush Camping Tools here.